and not doing too much. This crowd, standing room only, is going to be exciting here. Well, it's not the biggest arena, right? We don't have 15, 10,000 fans in here, but they are cramped in. They're on all three sides, and they got the mat surrounded, and it can get very, very loud in here. There he is, the number one wrestler in the country, Ryan Crookham. Local product at a Silicon Valley High School. Here we go. Takedowns are three points this year, making it a little bit easier to get that major decision and a beautiful sweep single, Steve, right off the whistle there by Crookham getting right after it. Yeah, and great pressure here. You can see the pressure he's keeping on there. Big change this year in college wrestling, and it, and it has affected some matches this year with that three-point takedown. Yeah, and we talked about that last night, how three takedowns gives you nine points already. You're right there at that major decision. Crookham looking right away not to waste any time on top. And, you know, Cressy has, yeah, he's not Vito Arugia, and that's what a lot of people were hoping to see, a rematch between the two. But he's in the Cornell room. That's his training partner. It's not like he's not prepared for, like, how do you prepare for anybody? Like, you got Vito Arugia to train with. Yeah. Right? So he's seen this level. Another same attack here from Crookham, working to get another three point takedown, and there it is. Kind of a little misdirection to his right, comes back to that left leg. Actually, a very good starting weight class, I think, for Lehigh University right out of the gate because Ryan Crookham's wrestling well. He has the potential to get bonus points. That gets you buy in right from the crowd early on and gets some momentum going your way. And right now, with two takedowns in the first minute and a half, Crookham is, uh, I would say, he's on fire with his leg attacks already. Yeah, and for Lehigh, as you said, to start at this weight, to get bonus here would be key because we have a big match coming up next in number 12 versus number 13 that could go a long way in deciding this match. Oh, that's going to be huge. And we talked about that in the open, how the first three and the last three are going to be critical for Lehigh and Cornell at that in that regard. Crookham is just relentless here. Another takedown. His movement and motion change of direction. Just outstanding. He's showing you why he is the number one wrestler in the country. Take a look at this replay here. He just keeps moving. He uses his hands. He uses his feet. And if you, you know, Obviously, you're legit if you beat a world champion like Vito Arruzzo, who I was unbelievably impressed with with the year he had in the past year. He wrestled as well as anybody in America, maybe even in the world. Well, and I think that's what got everybody so excited about seeing this matchup because last year at Nationals, Vito finished in the semifinals on Dayton Fix and in the finals against Roman Bravo Young. He finished so quick they couldn't even react. And to say Roman Bravo Young can't react to someone's shot is saying a lot. Nobody expected that, especially uh, coming out how Roman, Roman Bravo Young was wrestling. But Crookham was able to stop those attacks. He was able to scramble right at his pace as a first-year wrestler. Well, I was impressed with his performance. And I thought what, I, what really impressed me was when he went out against Dayton Fix in the semifinals and dominated that bout. And Fix didn't wrestle Crookham in the dual meet earlier this season. So right now, we got three takedowns. The crowd wanted a little bit of a stall call there, but time ran out. So right now on paper, he's got that major locked up with the riding time if it ended right now. But we got two more periods to go. Yeah, and coming out doing his job, as you would expect, and, and really for Qureshi, now at this point in the match, is to limit that bonus point. You know, and I'm very impressed, too, with, with Cornell as well. Lehigh's really stepping up big time this year. And Cornell, you know, there was a lot of changeover in the past few years. Rob Cole went out to Stanford, and then he left and went to UNC. Chris Ayers is out there. But besides that, okay, how's, how's Gray going to do as a head coach? Those are big shoes to fill. And I would say he has done a fantastic job of taking over that program and was the right hire for this program. Talk about how Mike Gray is going to do. 2023 NWCA National Coach of the Year. He took this team to a third place finish at Nationals last year and has them in the top 10 again this year.
And, and I'll tell you what, while we're talking here, if you're watching the action, Ryan Crookham is just at another level. He's in a zone and he just is relentless with his attacks. He's up 16 to 3 now in the second period. And being a local kid, I do know a little bit about Ryan Crookham and his love for this sport and training. A kid who loves the weight room, throws around some big weight in that weight room as a 133 pounder, weight that most people wouldn't believe, uh, but just absolutely loves to compete and train. Great low shot there. I mean. And that'll do it. A tech fall in under two uh, minutes, uh, or two periods. Unbelievable in everything that ever Lehigh fans wanted to see and get this team off to a great start. So Pat Santoro is talking the official right now. I'm not sure what's going on, but Lehigh with five points on the board after the first bout is really important here. And I'm trying to read lips here and see what's going on between the two referees. It almost seems like he's trying to understand why they stopped it for the for the tech. Well, looks like they got that squared away here. We're on to 141 pounds. 141 this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a great one. Number 10, Vince Cornella, and number 13, Malik Hines at 141 pounds. Malik Hines made a nice highlight reel on uh, Instagram on Flow Wrestling after this duel with that beautiful double leg he had in last night's match. You could see Cornella trying to tie him up right away off in the beginning of this bout and slow him down a little bit. Yeah, Hines a very quick athletic wrestler and it looks like Cornell does want to slow him down a little bit here. Oh, walked right into that one. Yeah, Let's see beautiful if we timing, right? Yes, it was. Oh. Hines looking good here. He's getting some height. He is so tough from here. And not yet. Crowd wants two, but Cornella has that foot locked up underneath there. I think he's, he's going to get it. He's, he's got to get his hip up a little bit, right? Shoulder, no control. Well, and Cornella doing a good job getting height right here. Yeah, he's Malik Hines is. Looked to be in, in control, but now he's going to give up the three. Wow. Give him credit for being patient, knowing what he wanted to do, and then executing it. Whether you're rooting for Lehigh, whether you're rooting for Cornell, you have to respect the level of competitors that we have out here today. And such high quality wrestlers and to to look at I believe we have at least three wrestlers here that lost in the blood round last year the round of 12 to not make that all American status to see the work that they put in in the offseason and come back out here and have another chance of being an all American. And Vince Cornella is one of those who lost in the round of 12 last year just missed out on being an all American. And you know that's the ultimate goal of all these wrestlers right. They want to get on that podium, yeah. right? You, you got you want to walk away with something, right? Some hardware. You may not be happy with uh, what you got, but a few years down the road, you're going to be glad that that you you got over that little hump there, and that's a tough one. I mean, most wrestlers lose in that blood round. I I lost in that blood round my sophomore year, and it's tough. It's a it's a tough thing. What a change here. Looked like Hines was just about in control and going to get that three point takedown. He ended up getting a little aggressive instead of taking that that stalemate trying to get that three and ended up giving up three himself. And now he's getting ridden out here and giving up some serious riding time. And you know this is the perfect match for Cornella here against a guy like Malik Hines who's very quick and in the open. You want to get, keep him down on bottom right. Keep him off his feet. And the Cornell crowd wanted a stall call and they got it. They got it. Improved. 
Although I don't really see a whole lot of action on top working for the fall, but but he's um, making it look good out to the side. Yeah, there. yeah, he is. And and uh, sometimes when there's no action, they're going to pick the guy that's giving less action and warn him. And you heard the ref say, "Head down there, head down there." Where Hines's head was down there, and he hit him with the stall call. Minute 48 in riding time in the first period for Cornella up 3-0. Hines will go down in the second. Up I'm was surprised feet. with that call. He, he got ridden out. And a nice Granby roll there. He's got to execute the points here. He doesn't want to waste a lot of time, but I figured if he went neutral, got to take down his tie to 3-3. So right now, we're still in control on top for Cornell. We got a stalemate call. Now do you think already giving up a minute 48 riding time in that first period went into that call knowing probably going to give up that riding time point instead of down 3 0 the thought is as coaches you're down 4 nothing. We need that escape and a takedown here in the second. Yeah but here's the thing. It's a ter it's terrible for Malik Hines to be on the map down below. He, he's he's much more effective on his feet getting out in the open and I'll tell you what see a nice shot there but not a not a great shot no a little straight in Cornella did square up there very quickly so what I was getting at here is uh, when you ride a guy out for a long period of time it mentally breaks you a little bit right yeah, absolutely. You're stuck on bottom and you can't get out for two minutes and 21 seconds. That slows your pace down a little bit. Now Malik Hines has some an opportunity to here to, I would say, get open. You know, I don't like him going down to a knee like this because Cornell just ties him up here. Yep, yep. I think he's got to really stay open and mix it up a little bit. Use his hands more. Get him out of position. Well, and to your point, Scott. Look at a wrestler's face when he just got ridden out and it's the opponent's choice and he takes top. That's yeah. the last thing you want after you just got ridden out is to go back underneath. Yeah and you know that's what the benefit is of being good on top like is Malik Hines. Is he going to not pick bottom Cornell. Right. He's probably not as worried about getting ridden out on bottom so you kind of got to be a good rider on top. So 3-1 here as we're getting to the closing seconds of the second period. And no takedown. The only points in the second was the one point escape by Malik Hines. Cornella leading 3-1. Here's that first takedown. Talk us through this, Scott. Hines looks like he's in control here. Well, he had his hips down on the mat and he looked in trouble, but Cornella stayed patient and kept that ankle. Once he got height, put him on his hip there. It was a it was a a beautiful well executed and patience to a to a takedown there off of very nice shot by Malik Hines who we thought was going to score there. Strategy here now he has over a minute yet now we're at a minute that he has to ride and he's not going to now down 4 one but really 5 one with that riding time he's going to need a takedown and ride him out uh, and he needs to get that takedown very quickly so or he's going to have to get two takedowns. Here's the thing. I don't mind the escape early like that. He cut a, as much riding time off without putting him in danger and maybe giving up a reverse reversal. That's the last thing he would want to do. Oh. So we're going up a body and Malik Hines is tough in this position and he's trying to almost get in that leg in. So you can see how he's creating a lot more action here. So now he had a hundred he had a minute and forty five seconds to get a takedown. He gets a takedown. It's a tied bout. Then he can decide what to do there. Do I ride him. Well what the riding's out because now that riding time is secured. Well I mean it's a tied up out but he still has the riding time. Right. He's got to cut that. He's going to probably be better off going for two takedowns. Yeah. Yeah or hopefully get a takedown and a, and a quick two. Yeah. That's a five point move. Yep. Hines is going to have to pick up his pace here a bit. I like Hines going into the underhooks and trying to get some upper body going. Uh, very veteran move there by Cornella. Seeing Malik Hines starting to open himself up and, and, and pick up the pace and Cornella 
attacks, and he's using that time. He's got to take him to his back here, and he has a chance to do that. You got a potentially dangerous there, as you can see, that knee was was bent there pretty good. 15 seconds. It was bent. I don't know. That's a tough call when you're when a reversal is almost eminent, and that happened last night. But you got a side on safety when you're a referee in that position. Well, that takedown in the first that looked to go to Malik Hines ended up scrambling that for Nella and getting that takedown is going to hold up with that riding time for a five to one victory putting Cornell on the board and that was a big one for Cornell. So that was one Steve that Lehigh was hoping to get here right on paper it would have been a little bit of an upset for Hines didn't wrestle poorly went out gave it gave it a good effort but just came up a little bit short there. At 149 pounds, got Meyer Shapiro, a freshman, first year wrestler that everybody's very excited about. And, and for Lehigh, we have Griffin, Kelvin Griffin. I apologize, spoke too soon. Ethan Fernandez at 149 pounds for Cornell. Oh, uh, great leg attack there. It's exactly what you love to see your wrestler do as soon as he gets out on the mat in the opening whistle, get that first takedown right away. And that's exactly what Fernandez did. 3-1 here. Good escape here by Griffin. Wrestle He's kind of both guys locked up in a collar tie here. Same attack, same finish for Fernandez. Fernandez getting to those legs just a little too easy, but Sticking with it, and that's smart. Another one point escape, and now it's six to two. Fernandez certainly just happy to go back up to neutral. Well, those first two takedowns were quite simple. The same setup, same attack, same finish. See if Griffin can make that adjustment. Here's the great thing about that three point takedown. A takedown here cuts it to six five. Not a lot of riding time there for Griffin. To, kind of get this match back to within range. He's going to have to try something here. Uh, you know, there's a difference face. between like Bad a little face. shrug Good or a half a shot when you look Overhead. at Fernandez taking two great full attacks. you got to commit to your leg attack. Talk about, you know, what, what college coaches want to see. And, you know, at a high school wrestler, Wrestle you want to be committed to your shot. You don't get takedowns Fingers at the highest level and, by, and, and you're not going to score with half shots. No, and you got to finish right away at this level. Action. Better defense there by Griffin. He's got a nice, he's got a front headlock here. Let's see if he can use this, bring him down to the mat. Fernandez clamping down on the wrist and the elbow here. Fernandez doesn't seem to want to be in close. He seems to like to work out in space, and Griffin kind of closing that gap. A very good throw by he just didn't move his feet there. No, I mean he got him the turn. He had a little bit of an angle there, but didn't, you know, didn't convert it to something else after that. Action. So he's got Griffin seems to be doing a little bit more of the stalking here. Yeah, he seems to settle, be settling in after those two easy takedowns he gave up. First period's going to come to a close. Fernandez is going to lead 6-2 with 14 seconds of riding time. And it'll be Lehigh's choice. Nice head outside single. Goes right to his finish on a double. You talked about that, Steve. How Fernandez is doing a really good job of just 
shooting and finishing right away. Yeah, his feet aren't stopping. He took that shot, head outside, and just kept moving, where Griffin kind of seems stuck there a little bit. Could that be nerves in this environment for a young wrestler like Griffin, where his feet just weren't moving uh, early on in this match, where he seems to have, have kind of picked it up a little bit, and he's, he's moving a little bit better here. He's definitely moving better. I think Fernandez or Fernandez has a little bit more fast twitch muscle fiber and uh, you could see that as he as you saw in the choice there. He chose neutral. He did. They, they did a great job of scouting Griffith because Griffith is awfully tough from the top position. Griffith needs to score a takedown to cut the lead to five. If he does that. You may want to even put him on top. Down 6-5. You, I mean, unless he can, unless you see, unless he can like get Hernandez tired going into the third period. A better movement there by Griffin. Yeah, sat to his hip here, and it looks like he's, he's going to be in a good score, position. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Cornell, it does a great job though yeah. of being in this position. They hook that ankle and they get their shoulder underneath the leg or they lock it up on top. Same position that we saw Hines and Cornella in last bout. He's got to clear that shoulder and he wasn't able to and they're starting it back up on their feet. Good stalemate call. Got 30 seconds left here in the second period. Griffin seems to have opened up a little bit. His feet are moving a little bit better. You know, if I'm the Lehigh staff, I'm saying our head outside singles aren't working that well. They're sitting to their hip. They're locking our ankles up. I might be looking for more straight on and sweep singles and low singles. Because that's exactly when they're going to sit to their hip right off the head outside single, which is gonna, what, that's Short what time Griffith here. wants to do. Lehigh looking for that three point takedown, not going to get it. And. Scott, you were right. Every Lehigh coach without hesitation taking top here in Griffin, first year wrestler. At some point, you have to say, you just wrestled five minutes, a good portion of it was on your feet, and you did not score. We got to try something different here, and this is his best position. And, and, you know, I could, I could give out every secret about every wrestler, and so can you, Steve. It doesn't matter. There's so much video out there on everybody. If you're not watching it, you don't want to win. You're not, if you're not watching it as an athlete and a coach, you really don't want to win. And there's so much to be said about this, Scott. Everybody thinks you got to go bottom all the time, but you just said it. Put your wrestler in the best position, and, and Griffin's best position is on top, and, and you can see why here. He's tough with these legs. And he has that power half. And they're going to get a stall call, I think, here soon. But it's awfully difficult to do much when the top guy has both legs booted in. You know, the good thing is, is he's working up to his base. Yeah, you really just have to work to clear your legs on one side, which Fernandez has not been able to do. Griffin riding tough, and he has one minute here. Looks like he is going to secure that riding time point, but that only cuts it to six to three. He's going to need back points here. Yes, he is. And he's going to need the bottom guy to wrestle a little bit, right? Absolutely. But he can't force it here on this restart. Oftentimes you see guys force throwing those legs in and you give up that reversal or escape. I don't think Fernandez tries to explode off the whistle. That makes him more vulnerable to a crab ride or legs. I think he's just going to stay in a good base. Happy to be on bottom. If he gets hit for stalling twice, I'm still going to, or three times, I'm going to win the bout. Yep. Just don't get turned. And you know what? That's a strategy that you sometimes need to use. You can't go, always go out there and dominate your opponent. No, especially not at this level. Clearly, their game plan was not to get underneath him, and, and Lehigh took that away from him by taking top. He's got that. He lost that power half. He's got the riding time point, but he's got 10 seconds to get some backs here. Doesn't look like Fernandez is going to give those back points up, though. Those two takedowns will hold up by Fernandez in the first period. Riding time point goes to Griffin, but a 6-3 victory for, for Cornell and Fernandez.
score 6-5. Cornell leads after three. We'll be back inside Grace Hall after this break. Historic Hotel Bethlehem is your three-time national champion, best historic hotel, and proud presenting sponsor of the 2023-24 Lehigh Wrestling season. Visit them at hotelbethlehem.com or call 610-625-5000 to plan your stay. Scott, first three matches got what we wanted out of Crookham, but Cornell took those toss-up bouts to lead 6-5 after three. And here we have another good one and one you were excited about in Brignola and Shapiro. You believe Brignola is better than that 25 ranking here at 157. I do, but I also, Shapiro, he's legit. And is he gonna be good enough to, to beat him today? I mean, we're going to find out what he brings, but Shapiro is the real deal here. And he comes in as a freshman, highly touted coming in to his freshman year and 10 and 2 record. He obviously has owned up to that billing. Yeah, and both of those losses were out at the Cliff Keen. I think he got a little bit banged up out there and didn't look the same in the next two matches. But this kid is legit. He's very good. And, I, you know, when you, you look at Brignola, who loves to compete, does a lot of the things right, you want to see, okay, where, where now you're 25, you have some nice wins. Shapiro, I expect him to have a higher ranking before the end of the season than where he's at now. I, I agree. I think most people do. Uh, but he is climbing that ladder. And you can see he comes out as a freshman you would expect to see just going after things. I mean this kid was a world champion. He's legit. Yep. But right now Prignola is. I would say you know both guys this is probably evenly contested so far in terms of battling. For setups and control right now. Nobody really making a commitment on their attack yet. Look for one of these guys to kind of explode out of this tie up. Really good head hands defense there by Brignola. Wrestle out of it. One minute, guys. 
So with Lehigh only getting one of those three, yet they still got some bonus points. This would certainly be an upset win for Lehigh, but that would be huge for them if they could pull something out here. Right now it's no score. Two minutes and 15 seconds into the first period right now. Yeah, and especially with the next few bouts coming up where Cornell is most likely favored in all of those bouts until we get up to that 197 pound bout. The fans don't like that Shapiro is fixing his headgear there, but uh, that's just part of this uh, lovely rivalry that yeah, they and have. And the, the atmosphere here, right? The Lehigh fans love, love their Lehigh wrestlers. You know, and, and Cornell does too. They bring a great crowd every year to Nationals. Like you said, they, they've been a top program. Both of these programs have a proud alumni base. And, and you know, a lot of them get, to get along with each other outside of the arena. Well, two of the top teams in the EIWA for many years now. And, you know, you get out to Nationals and you root for your guys, right? You want to see EIWA represented well out there at Nationals. Shapiro trying a little, uh, little head fake and going on, but we got nothing in the first period. 0-0. Zero, zero. See what kind of action we can have. Shapiro taking bottom to start the second period. You know, the three point takedown, which we've talked a little bit about yesterday and today, and it's always going to be a topic this year because it's a new rule change. And Shapiro doing a nice job there, getting a one point escape early into the second period, only giving up nine seconds of riding time. Interesting what Shapiro just did there with his leg. You know, you, you, you talk about blocking off, getting controlling hands, or really four fingers, right? Uh, but what he just did there with that leg was very interesting. You don't see that very often, but he was comfortable in that situation. And yeah, he was. And getting back to this, you know, the three-point takedown in a lot of ways was also implemented to 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 de-emphasize riding time, right? Because the old way, yeah, two-point takedown, you're going to have closer bouts with two-point takedowns, where riding time is going to be a bigger factor. Right, so now that you, you get a three-point takedown, that's not nearly as big of a factor if you each get an escape, right? That's a one-point bout in the second or third period. You get one takedown, now it's a three-point bout. The riding time is not as big of a factor, and it's gonna be interesting to see how effective that is. Nice the inside air. trip there by Shapiro. Caught Brignola off guard. So he's got a tight waist here, doing a good job of trying to ride the last 35 seconds. They wanted locking hands, and they, and got, they got the call from the backup referee who had a much better angle there. Shapiro just seems like a fun wrestler to watch. He goes after it. The crowd getting it into it a little bit here. They want an escape here from Brignola to kind of get this match. Well, they were also... They noticed Shapiro was taking his time walking uh, back and back. I don't think he's fatigued, though. I think he's just being calm, being in control, and taking his time to get back there. And a lot of times, that's where you're putting your thoughts together, your game plan for the last 20 seconds here. They're riding really tight here. Last five seconds. Going to head into the third period, Shapiro. Four, Brignola one, riding time not a factor. It is Brignola's choice. Nice inside trip here. He doesn't, it doesn't take him down towards his butt or his back, but it does create enough, enough movement where he was able to get the two, the three point takedown here. So third period, 32 seconds of riding time for Shapiro and building. Brignola up to his feet. Nice mat return for Shapiro. Hanging in on those hips there. He really wants this riding time before he gives up an escape. Yeah, and that inside trip, he had that ankle trap, but he didn't quit on it. He really pressured on that left side and ended up getting that takedown where sometimes you see guys 
they get a little loose there and they kind of bail. He did not. He was comfortable there. Uh oh. Near side cradle attempt, but Brignola looks like he's going to come out of it and get that escape. Oh, he's in on a low single here. He might get this too. He's got him. If he, he can secure those legs, he's got to hook the leg. He's in near fall danger. Is the ref counting or was he just signifying that he was not yet? He's I don't think he was. That hip. He's got to control He's looking to control that hip. Brignola is in good position here. He's got to pick it up before we get that, he's that gotta, stalemate call. He's got to get those hips turned somehow. Or get back exposure. There he goes. He's got it. Can he get back points here? There, he's, he could. That's exposure right there, but only enough for maybe a one count. Good job by Shapiro. Bellying down. And he's... Oh, nothing. my Still goodness. Nothing. Shapiro now is in better position. Well, he's losing that leg, though. Coach Gray yelling for him to raise up. How good has Cornell been underneath with the ankle in these bouts? Uh, unbelievable, and honestly, that's the determining factor in all three matches. Wow, how impressive was that? At the buzzer, Shapiro. Gets the takedown, a 7-2 winner, actually make it 8-2 with over a minute riding time. And you're right, how impressive has Cornell been in all three of their wins? They've been in that situation and they've won every time. Yeah, they're, they're excellent in that position. And let's take a look at this scramble here. Bragnola looking like he might be able to get uh, back points in a neutral position, but Shapiro did a great job of knowing exactly where he was. Look at him scramble out of this here. Cornell is excellent. You want to beat Cornell, you better study them and watch. You got to be able to beat them in this position when they're stuck underneath with an ankle because they are excellent from there. All right, 165 pounds here, our last bout before we head to intermission. Number four, Julian Ramirez takes on number 27, Jake Logan of Lehigh. And this is in the middle of this lineup here. This is where Lehigh's really got to wrestle well. They've got some highly base. ranked wrestlers Down they're the facing. Can they wrestle competitively? Center. And even if they lose, keep action. it to a regular Center decision action. and give maybe your last three guys a, a chance in this dual meet. Right now it's a 9-5 match. Only points for Lehigh from Crookham who coincidentally has been the only lead high wrestler. He scored all the takedowns so far I in this match. Say, uh, Lehigh has six takedowns and they're all from Crookham. The other points uh, for Lehigh are escapes, so they're gonna have to get after uh, their offense here these next six bouts. And Ramirez opens up with a, a takedown. And he was just kind of stalking Logan and, and, and really taking the temperature to get after his attack. He's got Logan's head down, good pressure. Improving both guys. Ramirez, extremely tough wrestler. Yet surprised. Came out with a bang as a freshman, right? Knocking off Griffith, the national champ from Stanford. And surprised he hasn't reached All-American status yet. Red. Losing in the blood round again last year, but also the year before twice. So twice he fell one match Keep short of All-American status. And you know that's Keep something that, that has legal. to motivate him in the offseason. Absolutely. And boy, I'd be shocked again if he lost in the blood round again. Um, but you know, you never know how things shake out. Sometimes you get a top ranked wrestler that loses and then you end up having to beat them in the blood round to become an All-American, like a second or third seed at Nationals. And, and that's a tough draw. Already a minute 30 riding time for Ramirez. 30. 
Logan on bottom here, not really Improved. able to get too much space. Ramirez riding tough. Lehigh staff, Red. you know they're thinking about, okay, what do we need to see here to be in this match? And it's not going to be an easy feat when we get to the last three. You know, you got Foca, who's ranked eighth at 184. Cardenas is ranked seven. We, Beard got back to back top 10 matchups Friday night and Saturday afternoon. Green. Here's that takedown. The only one so far in this matchup. Little shot by Green Logan and a spin be pretty relatively bottom. easy spin behind red here for Ramirez. Yeah, and Logan took that Little shot kind of straight in and just stopped. Ramirez just hips too strong. And, and that, as you green. said, at red this middle. level, you can't take shots and stop. You got to finish. Green. A Ramirez beat We're neutral one. Red. national finalist Quincy Monday twice last year and still was not able to uh, earn All-American status. As you said, once you get out to that tournament, it, it's... You're, you're facing good guys everywhere, and, and you got to have your best weekend if you want to be on that podium. Work here. Ramirez is tough. I mean, he is legit. Consistency is one of the things. Sometimes you're banged up a little bit too. But I, I he's a top. No control. He's he's on. He's on the bottom side Three of a top red. 12 wrestler, by far. Three Some of red. these guys that are top control. 12, they're like a 19th, 18th seed. They end up there <laughs> two years in a row. He's been. On the other side of that, Improving. and uh, sometimes it's just injuries. Sometimes it's not peaking Improved and feeling great player. at the end of the season Improved. or a bad draw. But boy, I certainly would expect him on the podium this year. And in that Improved. first takedown, Ramirez showed his strength. The second takedown, he showed his quickness. And. and such a well-rounded wrestler. He's riding tough on top, has over two minutes and 30 seconds of riding time. He showed his Red power, two. he showed his quickness, and as why, why he's a top five wrestler in the country. Yeah, slowly just kind of cruising his way here to bonus Red. points, right? He's already at eight nothing. Gotta go. Green. We got a stall call on Red on top here. Gotta make it a and you see Coach Gotta Mike Gray, just kind of shake it off, just keep wrestling, keep working, keep doing what you're doing. Where yeah. sometimes you have guys getting frustrated that, in that situation. Red. There's not much wrestling going on there, right? And, and he's probably the referee's probably thinking a lot more riding, not as much working towards the fall. Crowds falling asleep. Let's kind of let's kind of get these guys wrestling. Logan picks up an escape here late in the period, get out of the and that's powerful. You always should try to get your opponent hit with a stall call as early as you can in a match because it makes a difference on how they wrestle later in the match. Like, do they have to ride you out for the last minute? Well, they already got one stall call. Yeah, it's tougher to drop to a leg and kind of I'm on bottom. Yeah. I'm going to do everything I can and be the best actor to get the guy on top hit for stalling, right? Yep. So when you get your opponent hit for stalling, it changes the, the, the complexity of the match. Here's that takedown and the quickness. Uh, look well, at the, that footwork. You want neutral now. Okay, we're going neutral right really well-rounded wrestler neutral. here in up. Ramirez. See how quick he, he, he 100% anticipated that and was, was already ahead of it before Logan even shot on him. That was great, great reaction. Another escape by Logan, seven to two. So you're gonna see Ramirez here looking for that takedown. He already has riding time secured, almost three minutes, but Obviously looking for bonus points for his team, which is a great part about this sport. It's not just a team sport or an individual sport. It's both. You're wrestling for yourself, but you're also wrestling for your team. Yeah, and even when whether it's a dual meet or a tournament, right? You're wrestling for your team and you see Penn State. Boy, they do it better than anybody collecting bonus points out in the postseason at the national tournament. Some of those elite guys that they have. And you know what impresses me about Penn State? They do it in different ways every year sometimes every tournament they come in with a different game plan uh, and, and they're just able to do it in so many different ways and for so long and so consistently I mean when you look at what Kale Sanderson's done at Penn State whether you like Penn State whether you like another team you have to give him the respect that they deserve 
it's not easy to build a dynasty like that and give him credit. I, I think he's one of the best college coaches regardless of sport in the the whole NCAA. Maybe the best in my opinion. Nice shot there got a little extended Logan. I mean Luke, Nick Saban coached a lot more years than him and Kale has way more national championships already. Yeah. Yeah what he's been able to do and bringing guys year in and year out keep guys happy. Now nobody out there take that the wrong way because Nick Saban is, is the, also the elite in coaching and I, it, it's a little more challenging in football to win a team title I think. And with that riding time point Ramirez secures a, an 11 three major decision and we'll head into the intermission with Cornell leading Lehigh 13 to 5. Welcome back to Grace Hall at our intermission. I'm here alongside Bruce Haynes, managing partner of Hotel Bethlehem. It's been a great year for you, Bruce. Uh, voted the nation's number one best historic hotel in the nation for three years in a row. Yeah, we wouldn't have gotten there if it weren't for the fans, Lehigh fans, the Lehigh Valley, Bethlehem. So we've, it's been a really good run. I really want to thank everybody for voting for us every year. It's a one month process in July. So to win it for the third year was really special. And um, and so we've got this great rivalry really between us and the Peabody Hotel in Memphis, which is if anybody hadn't been there, it's a great, great historic hotel. And they won it in 18, 19 and 20. And um, and we've won in 21, 22, 23. So next year, this this summer, I need everybody to come out because it's going to be like the seventh game of the World Series. Right. So. <laughs> So hopefully we get the same kind of support. So it's really turned into Lehigh Valley, Bethlehem, Lehigh Valley versus Memphis. And we've won the last three years. So. And, and talk about three years in a row, you got a text from three-time national champion Mike Caruso, a Lehigh great. Talk to us about that, and that's great company for you. Yeah, actually, uh, I didn't get a text the first two years, but this year when we were three-time national champ, and we, we play that up, I mean, our using that national champ thing is really tied into Lee wrestling. Um, but Mike texted me when we when that PR notice went out and he said congratulations Bruce you finally caught up to me. <laughs> so I said that's cool. And so I Mike obviously is our only three time national champ and actually he and I were in the same class at Lehigh and I was sitting around the mat when he was wrestling in those days. So uh, we have a great relationship and uh, but but I went back to him and I said well the only difference Mike is you're out of eligibility and we got another year. <laughs> yeah and, and talk to us about Ryan Crookham your community ambassador obviously a, a tight connection with Lehigh talk to us about Ryan Crookham and what he does for you. Yeah I mean it was sort of a natural progression for us uh, you know we've been the presenting sponsor of Lehigh wrestling for about six years seven years and uh, you know I, um, I've been a avid Lehigh wrestling supporter so is uh, Jim Jim Niemeyer and uh, Rich Niemeyer his son so our ownership has has a, a good legacy with Lehigh wrestling so when NIL came along uh, and we decided you know this is a kind of a natural progression and Ryan being a three time PA state champ uh, it just tied together with our three time national champ uh, so we felt that this was a way that we could kind of uh, help continue the Lehigh legacy of national championships and building national champions. So it's kind of national champions in Bethlehem building national champions in Lehigh wrestling. And so Ryan was the obvious choice for us because of his local connection and we're a community hotel. Uh, we about more than half of our business really comes from locals. Um, and so be, whether it's in our restaurants 
or our, um, our, our meeting rooms or our banquet facilities or friends telling their friends when they visit to stay at the hotel. So it, having a community ambassador, now we're a nationally recognized hotel, but at the end of the day, what we're looking for is somebody to help us connect with the community, and it's a, it's a great relationship. He's a perfect fit. He's majoring in financial engineering. We're going to, over the next four years, we're going to engage him in the business, learn about entrepreneurship, also represent us at Lehigh and actually in the community. We're going to have a, on the 28th, we're going to have a meet and greet at our ice cream parlor. And he's created a, a, the Ryan um, Brown and White Sunday. Uh, he's a big chocolate freak. So uh, come on out, one to four on the 28th. We'll be more about that soon. Such a great opportunity for Ryan and for Hotel Bethlehem as well and continuing to build that community. Uh, uh, what can we expect? What initiatives can we expect for the coming year out of Hotel Bethlehem? Well, we always have something going. So this year, um, we just opened uh, the spa, uh, Steel Magnolia. It's, uh, it's actually not owned by the hotel, but they're, they're leasing space in above the ice cream shop, in the, the building of the ice cream shop. So now, with a national luxury hotel, having a spa is a is a really a big piece of that. So we're pleased to have engaged Steel Magnolia and they're going to be right across the street. So they've just opened. They're in soft opening state right now. And we'll probably be doing some PR on that in the next uh, month. And then in March, we're going to open up our extended stay suites. These are nine one bedroom suites with full kitchens uh, for weekly rental or more, uh, weekly, monthly. Uh, not annual, not an apartment, but it's, it's really just an extended stay sort of offering that now the hotel uh, can, can provide uh, for somebody, especially somebody who's transferring here to the Lehigh Valley, waiting for their home to be built want, and want to be on Main Street and, you know, and all that goes on on Main Street and be able to stay in the hotel, use the hotel's facilities, including the spa now, which is in the same building. Bruce, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and everything you do for the community and the Lehigh Valley. We'll be right back with the second half of our matchup between Lehigh and Cornell. We'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute is proud to be the official sports medicine partner for Lehigh Athletics. To learn more about the region's only nationally ranked hospital for orthopedics by U.S. News and World Report, visit lvhn.org backslash ortho or call 833-LV-ortho. We're back here for the second half of our Lehigh Cornell match. Scott, we were just talking about it. The only offensive points Lehigh has is from Ryan Crookham. The last four bouts, no offensive points, just escapes. Yeah, that's not what you want to see if you're the Lehigh coaching staff, especially last night. They were really good on their leg attacks, but it's different doing it against a team that's not highly ranked versus Cornell. Here we have Baker for Cornell and Hartzig for Lehigh. This is one Lehigh has to get if they want to get themselves back into this match. Baker in on a quick shot. Herzig scrambling, but looks to be in some trouble here. Oh, Herzig getting some height. As I say that. And there's two on the edge. Three, three on the down edge. for Herzig. 
a local product out of Nazareth, Pennsylvania. What a great job scrambling off that attack. Take a look at this here. He kind of reversed it around. Nice opening shot. Persig ends up with the takedown on the edge at the break. Steve, you and I were talking about the pathway for Lehigh. Is there a pathway for them to win this duel? They've got to win here, which they're capable of. The next bout's going to be awfully different. Foka is a top three wrestler in the country. They're going to have to win the last three bouts, which they absolutely can. If they do that and everything remains a regular decision, we're looking at a 17-16 victory by Lehigh, but then everything's got to go perfectly their way for this to happen. Uh, what athleticism by Herzig, and the power too. Another three-point takedown by Connor Herzig. And that's Crowd's what you're gonna it. get out of a Connor Herzig. He is a powerful, powerful wrestler, but now showing the athleticism as he's matured. Yeah, you know, we were talking to his father, which you know very well prior to the match, and he is so excited for his kid to be in here. Not so excited that he's bumping up a weight class, but look at the, look athleticism. at the. Uh, Here's the power, here it comes. The reaction and the relentlessness on both of those takedowns. And as you said, these are the, this is only the second Lehigh wrestler in this duel to score offensive points. And Connor has battled some injuries over the last year and a half, two years, so it's so good to see him back out here, bumping up but looking good, up at 174 pounds. Got to be careful, he's really leaning in there. The Lehigh crowd getting behind that local product in Herzig. They want another score after those first two. Getting greedy, that's... You got to be greedy. And uh, not a bad local wrestler. Wrestled for uh, Steve. You're familiar with the high school that he wrestled at? Yeah, Nazareth, PA. I, I coached Connor with his I father as the head coach. I coached with his father, Mike, uh, for 11 seasons. Connor was a, a third place finisher as, as a senior out at States. Two time medalist, right? 119 career wins in high school. Yeah, and. And to add to that, and this is what I love so much about programs like Lehigh and Cornell, I actually had the pleasure of having Connor Herzig in class as a student in sixth grade. And such a smart, hardworking kid, great kid, great family. And that's what Lehigh gives you, right? They give you that student athlete and such great kids that go on to do great things in their life beyond the wrestling mat. And that's important to the staff. You know, that's you basically almost describe Pat Santoro and a lot of the coaches on the staff here. You, you go around anywhere in the country, they're you're, they're not you're not going to hear a bad thing about the Lehigh coaching staff. And that's important when you're thinking about sending your son off to college to help raise and cultivate right and mentor your son. I'm going to eat this one. You want them to be with the best possible people. Yeah, and it couldn't be better with Pat Santori, Toro, and, and Brad Dillon leading this program. 6-2 after the first period. Quick escape for Baker makes it 6-3. Hurts against 34 seconds of riding time. And how big would this be getting bonus points out of Hersig for Lehigh? Herzig looks like really light on his feet, almost looks like he's ready for Baker's attack and ready to score. And there it is. There's that re-attack. He, he looked like he was baiting him, and Baker fell right into it. And Herzig has a high leg here, looking to finish for his third takedown, and he does. Oh. I got the brick in coach's hand. It was definitely three points down there. And they're, they're going to take a look at this I'm not going to make any more predictions today because yesterday I think I was like oh, one It was a four. quick call. Absolutely, that was a three-point takedown for Herzig. Connor Herzig looking impressive up at 174 pounds. Yeah, and that, that's what makes it even more impressive. It's hard enough to win and be competitive at your own weight class. He's nine pounds, wrestling nine pounds up, weighed in at 165. Refer, referees are going to kind of talk about this. I'm not sure... 
Is it the, maybe something with the time or the maybe the riding time? Yeah, here's that. Herzig, he was just looking as if he was waiting for Baker to shoot and react. And sure enough, right after I said it, Baker takes a shot. Herzig reacts and gets that corner and finishes. There's that three points on on the mat. We see two feet in that hand. And you know, it's it's you get you shoot in on Cornell. They are so good defensively. You get their leg up on the shoulder. You're thinking that's an easy takedown. He almost scrambled out of that. Well if they didn't throw that brick and stop it he may have. Especially from what we've seen out of Cornell already today. They have really done a great job Cornell defensively. Creating scrambles and defending especially head outside singles but they're also very good on the straight on sweep singles as well so. During our first time out of the match, Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute wants to remind you to take time out for yourself each day. And if an orthopedic or sports injury is keeping you from doing what you love, make an appointment today at lvhn.org backslash ortho or call 833-LV-ORTHO. Back to the action here. Herzig on top, leading 9-3 in the second period. 41 seconds of riding time. There you get a good look at Connor Herzig. Such a great young man. Looking to secure a little bit more riding time. One. Doing a great job on his feet here. Why not stay there, right? Uh, he's been locked in on his feet with his attacks, with his reattacks, his finishes. Fingers. Big, big moment in this dual meet, right? Not in the dual meet, but in this particular match, right? Close the gap. It's five point differential. The next takedown is huge because one wrestler's trying to not give up that major decision, and the other one definitely could use those extra points right now for Lehigh. Yeah, with 20 seconds left, Herzig has choice. He has the three takedowns, four escapes for Baker. Herzig just looking very comfortable with his game plan. And that'll end the second period with Herzig up 9-4. And Herzig will have choice. And Herzig will take bottom. Nine four, gentlemen, nine four three. This is a big two minutes for Second Lehigh period. here, Scott. What do you expect to see here in this third period? Well, I. Hey, slight pause, wait for okay. Caution on Cornell there. Set. Go ahead, Red. Initially, I expect a one point escape. There's his second. The next will be a point. Herzig also has this a This is going to be huge. Now, Coach Santoro is saying this should be a point. It is a point. A point. I thought Hertz, Hertz This got changes called. it because what I was going to say, it would have been 10-4, right? With riding time, 11-4. You don't have the major, so I would expect Benny to not be very active on his feet, to kind of shut down and maybe keep the match to a one-point decision. But now if he gets the escape, it's a 10-4. Ten for that they he wasn't awarded, right? That was his second caution. No, the caution. first caution was on Herzig in that first period. His coach Santoro won, put up a point, but that, that wasn't the case here. Herzig doing a great job. He gets his escape. See if he can score here. So that would have made a big difference if that point was in play, but it's not. It's 10-4, 24 seconds of riding time, a minute and 31 here. This is going to be a battle. I expect to see Connor Herzig to open up get physical and uses explosiveness to get points. Benny I think you're going to see a good stance collar ties trying to slow down the pace of the match. A lot of time left. And here Herzig doesn't want to just go go after this match is still in in play for Baker if he would get a takedown and take him to his back. One good setup, one good takedown will do it for Herzig. And, and you know, it doesn't hurt Herzig. As long as he takes a good shot, doesn't get taken down to his back, he's going to win the duel. So he definitely wants to go after this takedown. 50 seconds remaining in this bout. Herzig up 10-4. Riding time not a factor. 
Expect to hear the clap coming soon from the Lehigh crowd. Yeah, and you hear his coaches and teammates letting him know one more is a major. There the coaches are up. There it is. There's a good attack. Oh, and he dropped right down to that ankle nicely, but great defense by Benny. Now he's got an underhook here, 20 seconds. The bonus point is not crucial to the win, though, in this dual meet. As long as they win the last three bouts and don't give up bonus, too much bonus points in the next match. Great match by Connor Herzig, a 10-4 winner here. Puts Lehigh back on the board 13 to 8 with four matches to go. And as you said, now Cornell heavily favored here. That bonus point would have came in big time, right? In case they get bonus here at the next weight class, Steve. Yeah, and, and everything like you said, the last three bats has to go Lehigh's way, but now that gets Lehigh going a little bit heading into these last four bouts. But I'll tell you what, right? Very nice win by Hersig. Oh, bumping up, like you said, giving up nine pounds. And, and to come out and show that aggressiveness and those finishes, and quickness, power, everything on display there for Connor Herzig up at 174 pounds. At 184 pounds, the seventh ranked Chris Foco will take on Jack Wilt, who is eight and five on the season. Heavily favored, as we said here, is Cornell. But now Wilt has a job to do as well for his team. And he's got, and it's going to be a very difficult job because Foca is the real deal as well. And they, they're just loaded, Cornell, and every year they just keep reloading. Yeah, third place finisher, All-American for Foca last year. Very tough wrestler. And knows what he has to do for his team. And, and he's got a quick start in 20 seconds, gets that first three-point takedown. So the challenge for Wilt here is to not give up too many bonus points here because they're going to have to make up a bonus point here somewhere if they give up any here. And a nice, oh boy. And focus oh, going right after, trouble. sucks him back here, has got him in trouble and he's got a lot of time on the clock. Reminiscent of a guy we talked about, a Lehigh alum and All-American national champ, Troy Letters with that little crab ride kind of half right to his back and he has him in trouble. Yeah, Troy Letters, phenomenal, phenomenal career here at Lehigh. Wilt's in trouble, Foka taking his time. He's got a minute and 52. Oh, great job by Wilt, but look at Foka right back right in back on that leg. Yep. Wilt kind of paused after getting out there and Foka right back at it, but Wilt is awarded that one point escape. Foka's only loss last year, here, here it is, it looked like he was in trouble. Yeah, pulled him back nice, got out of this, but not without giving up four back points, which is huge for the Big Reds. So right now they're on their feet. Still a lot of time left in this first period. And Foca is just kind of on a mission right now. Yeah, he knows what he needs to do for his team, and he's battle tested. His only loss last year at the NCAA tournament was to eventual and returning national champ Carter Storacci, and he also had a win over national champ in Makai Lewis last year. So obviously a very tough wrestler, and he's doing what he needs to for his team in this first three minutes of the first period, up 10-1, and now has over a minute of riding time as well. Yeah, it's looking good for Cornell here, certainly with bonus points and maybe even a tech fall at this point, which would give them a little bit of breathing room. But again, these last three bouts, you want to stick around and watch them, even all the way up to 125, where we're going to see Luke Stanick come out against local Lehigh Valley wrestler Brett Unger for Cornell. That's going to be a good match. Yeah, the last three bouts are all toss-ups, all going to be bouts that matter so much, not only for the team score here, but also for uh, EIWAs and for Nationals. Nice little roll, Granby roll for Foka to get out here right at the end of the period. He picks up two points. 
And, and Wilt has to keep wrestling here. Uh, down 10-2, headed into the second period. Here's this roll you'll see. Slight pause, wait for a second. Go green. Just has to keep scoring, does Wilt try and get himself back into this match and, and limit as much bonus point as possible. Caution on the top guy. We got another one, too. I'm not See if sure he's going to give top or bottom like there. It might be on red this time. You need to put your head on the midline. This is on both of you. Okay? Both the ref has warned him twice now that head on the midline for Wilt was not. I didn't see him signal a caution, though. Either. So maybe he kind of cut them both a break there. I saw the backup referee, though, hold up a C with his with the arm that had the red wristband on. But, you know, sometimes the wrestlers are just a little jumpy. Throwing his hands, Red. Hold his hands, one. An easy escape there for Foca. Oh, good reattack. And another. Foca just too much here for Wilt so far. I mean, he wrestles very smooth and effortlessly for a 174 pounder. So he's up by 12 minute riding time locked in for right now. And uh, you got to be he's got to be thinking, you know, I want to want to get him to his back and maybe secure a pin if I can. Looking for a I get tilt the tech here. Ball. Coaches from Lehigh. Red one, red they wanted, wanted the them ball. to look for the fall. Foka came right back. He red knew what he was doing no. there. But it, he put himself in exposure. Lehigh fans starting to get into this match a little bit more, understanding what's at stake. Red at you. Heading into the last three matches. Oh, uh, he's got a near side cradle locked up. He's kind of trying to get himself in better position. Uh oh, Foka's in trouble. Foka in control. He just had, didn't have that great, that near side cradle. He has the lock by the knee there. Wants it closer to the neck. Another late escape for Will. We'll head into the third period with Foka leading 14 to 3. Riding time just about locked in. Well, Two minutes noticed, and 56 seconds. He didn't want to. He didn't want that takedown at the end of the second period there because he doesn't want it to be a 14 point bout. He wants he wants to be able to get. Try to get that pin, ball. Yeah. Get that fall before the tech fall. What you as, what you want to see out of your wrestler as a Lehigh coach, down 14-3, but continuing to wrestle here. There's a nice attack again by Wilt. Foca kind of taking a little breather here, it seems. But I expect to see him kind of open up and get after that fall or a technical fall. You know, he's trying to feel out his game plan too. He's got a lot of time here, and he knows he's got to he's got to work something, either a takedown to your opponent's back or he's going to have to work something on top. Whoa. He looks a little gassed, does Boca. It, it no appears that way, yet. but uh, nice now job. There should be one. two with that far ankle. Three point Three takedown. Point take down. Uh, you're going to probably catch me say two a, a couple more times, but getting used to this and something doesn't look right with Foca there. Yeah. He whether he's run out of gas or what it is, and looking at the, the, the clock, which as a coach, you do you not want to go see neutral here because you can cut the major decision now. 14 6, make it. Make it 15, but really with the riding time, it's 16 6. So a takedown would cut it down to seven. He's got to get out of that tie. Wow, it's really surprising how Foca just kind of automatically here. I don't know, maybe he's not feeling oh. well. Great attempt at a duck, just kind of didn't come up. Oh, and he gets tip. it! With six seconds left! Wilt 
cuts that major decision down. Three seconds on the clock, an escape needed. Now remember, Foka I'll has. I'll tell you what, look at the sportsmanship by Foka. Patting him on the shoulder. Yep. What a good, I, I even noticed that at the beginning of the match. Tremendous sportsmanship. What, what, what a great bout by both guys. And as I said earlier, down 14-2, will continue to wrestle, saved his team a point that could come in very big here in these next three bouts. I don't know what happened to Foka, but give Griffith credit, right? Give him, uh, give him credit. Well, uh, excuse me, nice, two nice ankle picks right at the end there. And I'll tell you what, that got the Lehigh crowd fired up. Yeah, and what, what better guy do you want coming out of, out on the map for you for Lehigh and Michael Beard and the big one here for tonight. Two top 10 ranked wrestlers in Cardenas and Beard at 197 pounds. We thought this was a good bout. It's about to get better, Scott. It's, it's going to be interesting. This is where I had the score on my paper. I had it right here. 16 to 8 at the break. Right, right, 16 right to at eight this right point, now. 16 yep. to 8, and I said, okay, if Beard could pull it out, 16-11. Taylor pulls out a win, 16-14. Stanich wins, 17-16. You called that at the break, Lehigh. right after the break. Yes, you did. Let's see if Beard can take care of his part of this. This is probably the most competitive bout out of the remaining three. Yeah, you have number eight, Jacob Cardenas, and number 10, Michael Beard, going at it not only for themselves, but also their team in a big duel bout. And these two split bouts last year. Yes, they did. And it was... Cardenas won in the EIWA finals, but Beard had beat him 6-2 earlier in the year. Yes, in the duel. So here we go. Let's see if Michael Beard can reverse this in the duel this year. And he looked good last night. Yes, he did. Against Dupre, two-time All-American. Number seventh rank. Uh, yes, and, and he took it to him. Eight to one, almost a major. I think he actually did get the major last night. I think it was 10 You're to right. one. You're it, right. It, it was 10, to, yep, 10, 10 two. Or 11 two, I believe. It was Taylor won eight, eight to one. Well, Card did. Cardenas with an early three-point takedown here. Not the start Beard wanted kind of got out of position here. Really nice single here, and he did a good job of bringing it up high, and you see when it got Beard on his hands there, made it easy for him to just go behind. So yeah, great job attack. coming out, and Cornell's done a nice job of this tonight, coming out and going after that first takedown. Yeah, and th th that, those low leg attacks and that ankles, and then controlling right above that knee and kind of in control there. Uh, you know, and I know Pat Santoro really well, Steve, because I've, he was on my team at Pittsburgh. And I've coached with him at Lehigh, and he was one of those wrestlers that came out right off the whistle and would try to score an attack because if you give up the takedown in the first 30 seconds, you have six minutes and 30 seconds to recover. Yeah. Right? So he would, he would push the pace high. Overall, Cornell's doing a better job of that particular strategy in this match. But Lehigh was 0-3 going into yesterday's duel. They are looking good. The team is looking good. They're competitive. They're in this duel meet against the number nine team in the country. Yeah, and as you know, Scott, this sport is not about what you do in December and January. It's about are you ready end of February and into March as you get your <laughs> tournaments underway. Well, and it was a six to two win, right? Last year in a duel, Beard winning it. 10 to 9. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a fight. Oh great level change in leg attack. Can he score here? There's this three-point takedown. He's gotta work up those legs. And he is with 30 seconds left, four to three, Beard. They want stalling. They, they he want was stalling, crawling. crawling off the mat here. Beard now I, working on his riding time. This would be huge to ride out this I first period. I wonder if there's going to be a discussion about this. Take a look here on Here's this takedown. this level change. Wow, what a great job. And Cardenas just didn't meet that level. 
and as he's working up, and you know, this is almost, this is kind of a little bit of a natural reaction, though, too. As somebody's working up, you want to be kind of moving forward, right? Absolutely. Keep your hips free, get some space. He didn't crawl all the way off the mat. I kind of like that it was a non-call there. You don't want to you don't want to call like that to determine the outcome of this match unless it's absolutely obvious. Um, but one of the things that's impressive about two 197 pounders is their shot to finish time is awfully quick for big guys. Yeah, and, and both of them. That's what this sport has become. Not just the strength and the power, but the athleticism. Athleticism. First period, Michael Beard up 4-3. He surrendered that first early three-point takedown, got the escape, and got his own takedown. Beard's choice, and he takes bottom here, heading into the second period. And he's got 27 on riding time, which is might, is probably going to be a factor in this bout. Yeah, he looked like he, he was in control on top there. And su surprising to see Cardenas not work harder to get that one point and tie it up at the end of that first period. And if you're Beard, you got to be saying to yourself, all right, two situations now where it could have been a potential stall call. I want to get that stall call. He's got to keep pressing the action and keep staying on his attack. But I could say the same thing against Cardenas. Like, he's got to do the same thing, too. Beard seems to be more settled into this bout, even though Cardenas got that first takedown. But Beard seems to be moving a little bit more here. Well, and you wanna you wanna be on the attack when you're at you're in your home environment here. You have the ability to get that crowd behind you. You gotta earn it. You gotta go out there and be aggressive, and they will cheer for you, and they will they will fight for you. This Nick next takedown is huge. Beard up 5-3 with one minute left in the second period. 20 seconds of riding time for Beard. We got a tight one here for you folks. 16-8, Cornell. And he's got to push the action here. Like, right now, stay on that, heavy on the head. Get him going backwards. 45 seconds. If you don't get a takedown, get that stall call. And Beard's doing a pretty good job of this right now. Yeah, Beard definitely moving better than Cardenas since that first takedown. The Lehigh coaches and fans looking for a stall call, just kind of grabbing hands and controlling a wrist, not letting Beard get to his attacks. And there is that stall call. And you can see that almost coming, and I'm glad the refs waited a little bit. Oh, nice slow leg attack. Bit. And he's going to get to the far ankle. Yes, he is. With six seconds left, they go out of bounds. Beard up eight to three and looking like a man on a mission. He does, and Cardenas is kind of reminding me of Foca in the last match. Yeah, you saw that little peek at the clock. And, and the Lehigh fans getting into it. Not what Cornell wants here. See if Beard can continue this into the third period. I didn't think we'd be talking about this, but can he be looking for that extra bonus point it's, here it's, in the third period? It's kind of crazy. Will, will be Cardenas' choice here. And Cardenas takes neutral. But I agree, he's looking a little petered out. You know, it's a tough time of the year to wrestle. There's a, you know, a lot of colds, a lot of flus. You work in a school system, you see it all day long. and. It's so easy to not ever be at 100%, and that's one of the keys to, like, it's hard to be consistently at the top of your game, especially when you're competing in sports during cold and flu season. Absolutely. Now you see Cardenas starting to open up and wrestle here a little bit. Something you'll expect in March that he'll be able to do for seven minutes, but he kind of shut it down there a little bit after his first takedown. You see the Lehigh coaches again calling for a stall of Cardenas just kind of holding on to fingers. And the best way to for Beard to handle this is be patient and then hit that single again because he has been so effective with that shot. Oh, and here comes the crowd getting behind Beard. And we may, if he keeps pressing the there action. There you see the Lehigh. Bench looking for that stall call. 
One minute left to go, 8-3, riding time not a factor at this point for Beard. This is a big one. A takedown and a ride out would secure the major he in this match. Uh, very shortly, you got to see Beard getting on that offensive. There it is. There's that second stall call. Cardenas playing the edge. He could get another one. You know, I I sense that Beard is anticipating some type of counter that Cardenas is trying to draw him into. I can't imagine Cardenas would shoot here because he knows he's waiting for it. We haven't you seen know, a shot I don't by see Cardenas. him just backing up and saying, I'm not going to give up the major. He's got something that he's setting Beard up for, and I think Beard knows it, and that's why he's not pressuring on that I, single I, leg attack. I would agree with that. There's another stall call. Not going to make a difference here. 10 3 Michael Beard after giving up that first takedown. Very impressive. Last six minutes for Beard. That is a huge win for Michael Beard. Cardenas is tough. 16 to 11. Cornell leads with two bouts to go. Lehigh Wrestling is back in Lehman Turner Arena at Grace Hall for two duels next weekend. The Mountain Hawks will host Penn Friday night on Takedown Cancer Night, presented by Red Robin in partnership with LLS, and then Navy on Saturday on Salute to Service, presented by Weiss Markets. Don't miss out on all the excitement. Get your tickets now at lehightickets.com. You know, I'm looking through the Cornell schedule on their website and boy what a what a schedule they've had this year Cliff Keen Pitt ranked 13th Iowa State 6 Ohio State ranked 8th Virginia Tech 11th and now Lehigh along with some other duels in there and they still have University of Missouri coming up who's ranked as high as second in some rankings and we got two big boys here number 11 Nathan Taylor out of Lehigh and number 20 Luis Fernandez. This is a big match again one of those guys I talked about earlier a blood round casualty uh, round of 12 Luis Fernandez lost last year out at Nationals one match short of all American status and this is a big one for both teams with the match at 16 to 11. Yeah and you could tell Nathan Taylor has put on some size from last year and some muscle. He was the uh, freshman intermat freshman wrestler of the year in the heavy at the heavyweight 
And uh, impressive freshman year, and he's and he's looking even more impressive this year. And you know, one of the most important or, or impressive things about Pat Santoro and his staff, Zach Ray, give him credit, uh, is Nathan Taylor's training partner. Uh, but Nathan Taylor was not a huge kid in high school, but they saw the frame on him and felt like he could really fill into a 280 pound. 85 pound wrestler and boy did he ever and he is as athletic as they come and and Lehigh struggled a little bit over the last couple of years with some injuries with some good wrestlers and things like that and that happens everybody goes in cycles you know up in the first couple games of the season everybody thought Alabama football was going to be terrible right and so they're starting to pop some of these recruits for them and Nathan Taylor's one of them. And you talk about him having the ability to work out with Zach Ray. How about Kerry McCoy, the head yeah. freestyle coach? How about Jordan Wood, two-time All-American at heavyweight? This is heavyweight you right here. Yeah, I watched I watched a an interview of Nathan Taylor, and he was asked what he wants to do after he graduates, and he says, I want to wrestle for LVWC. <laughs> and you know, that's a sign of a successful program. When your athletes feel like they have everything they need right here. To be able to compete. Look at this athleticism by both guys. Taylor has Fernandez in trouble. He's got to climb the ladder. There he's getting ball would be points. huge two nights in a row. He's got him. And Fernandez. Oh, what a battle there. 6 0, 40 seconds left. Taylor looked to be in trouble, but there's that athleticism we talked about. You remember Taylor. getting thrown on your back and how scary that is, right? When you get down to your base and roll over to your stomach, you're like, thank you. When you're 270 pounds and somebody's on top of you the same weight and you get off your back, that's got to be like 10 times even more of a relief. And you look at Fernandez, he escaped death there. Here it is, and you see Taylor in trouble. That low ankle attack we've seen so much from Cornell. Look at a heavyweight coming out the back door with a single and look at the look at the just the, these guys wrestling at heavyweight in these scrambles. It's unbelievable. You didn't used to see that one back when we were younger. No and so much we could watch that clip over and over and over again. So much that went into that scramble for that takedown and the back points. Taylor still on top only gives up one very smart there by Taylor. But short time, don't want to see that point be given up. 50 seconds riding time up, 6 1 is Taylor. So Cornell's choice or Lehigh choice, they're going to defer. And I expect him to choose bottom here. And we got a good one coming next at 125. Luke Stanick, Midlands champion. Yeah. And a local product out of Notre Dame, and a New Jersey wrestler, but out of Notre Dame. Uh, Brett Unger having a great start to his career up at Cornell. Yes, he is. And top top 15, both guys. It looks like we're going to get what we talked about here and coming down to that last match. But Taylor still has work to do against a very tough Fernandez. What I like about Nathan Taylor is he's young, but the style that he wrestles, he's able to grow and continue to get better with that style. You've seen guys that are round of 12 as a freshman and they're round of 12 as a senior and they never develop. And you talked about that. Like, you, I think it was off air or maybe earlier you were saying, you know, what do these, what are the college coaches looking for? What do they want, you know? And I'll tell you, when I was recruiting, for Lehigh, I wanted guys with great leg attacks. Great leg attacks on their feet, the ability to shoot. How many takedowns here today came down to a good shot and finish? Yeah. And it's harder today because of the scrambling ability of these other opponents. We didn't have that element no, the sport like has they do changed. today. It has evolved tremendously. Yeah, and, and we talked off air. My question to you is, there are so many great high school wrestlers that just don't end up becoming what we think they might in college. What, what do you think the difference is transitioning from high school to college to become that elite? And again, they have good careers, but to get on that podium consistently, uh, what does it take in college? Because it's a different animal. Well, I'll tell you what, go down and talk to Ryan Crookham. 
Vito Arruja when he's here and half of most of these guys on both of the starting lineups they can tell you you know and, and one of it comes down to nothing that even happens on the map love of the sport loving what you're doing they don't dread going into practice they love it they love being in the room here we go third period Taylor up 6-2 he has one minute of riding time he's about to lose that choose his bottom but he knows he's got to get out and he's got to get a takedown in order to get that bonus point win and Fernandez throwing double boots in here right off the whistle not a lot of movement by Taylor but Taylor seems pretty comfortable right yeah, now and here Fernandez a little high there yeah but he's got two oh, boots he's, in now he, he's got he had he's to clear got one extended now on the mat as he's getting both legs over on one side which is what you need to do there now he's just got to clear some hips he's got to clear one of those legs now he should be trying to swim that right leg inside good strategy for him here he's got both legs booted in then he gets a turn here he can get a four count he's got to get one of those boots out that's and really what's keeping him in it's a half a second differential He's going to have the riding time. Yes, he would if he got ridden out. Right here's 101, and riding time's at zero right now on, this, on the clock. Best case scenario here for Taylor, we've got to see some explosion, and you see Coach Zach Ray telling him, you got to explode up. Here's 6 2, a you know, minute left. Taylor is a good scrambler, but do you really want to scramble with both legs booted in down on the bottom and try to roll through? I wouldn't, he's got to get to his feet. One's fine. He can't let the second one in here. And you see Fernandez going to slowly try to kind of feel for when he can slide that second one in. But and you know we talked about this earlier. If he stays in good position for the last minute, doesn't get turned. Right. Sometimes winning is just not getting turned on bottom. Even if you have to give up a, a, a stalling call point. I know that's a, not the best strategy. But sometimes you got to do against a good opponent what you got to do to win in a tight dual meet like this. Well, and it, Taylor has to realize if he doesn't get turned, he wins this match. And that that's goal number one for his team right now. If he does not go to his back, he does not lose this match. And I don't have a problem with that strategy. I would if I were the other coach. Yeah, I'd be yelling absolutely. stalling. But you know Ten what? Seconds here, stalling we're is a strategy. You can use it. It's not illegal. Taylor going to do his job here for his Lehigh Mountain Hawks. Gonna take a six Here we two go. three. Oh, they didn't give that riding time point. It should have showed up. It's had 101 on the clock. It, it sure did. And zero on the riding time. Does it matter? Does not matter. Six to two, six to three. We have a 16 to 14 bout in favor of Cornell. It will come down to the final bout at 125 pounds. Where you have first year wrestler, ranked number six, Luke Stanich, and you have a sophomore, ranked number 14, out of Notre Dame, Paul Lee. Steve, Cow. did we tell the Service Electric fans out there and the Flow Wrestling community that this thing could come down to the last match and Lee Kai could win this duel? And listen to this crowd. They are excited and looking forward to it. They're going to get loud here in the final bout. You have Brett Unger, number 14, a sophomore and a first-year wrestler, and Luke Stanich, you see, ranked sixth in the country. And if you've been on Flow Wrestling, one thing you know is that they've been they've been talking about this 125-pound weight class, how wide, wide open, open it is. Yes, and Noto, is. the number one ranked guy in the country, just, just lost. Went down. Yes, and so did. Stanich has come into this field and been a big surprise as a true freshman. Yeah, uh, penciled in as a 133 pounder. He came to the coach and said, coaches, 125. Sure enough, here he is. They see the same characteristics in him that they do in Crookham. And you got Brett Unger here, who's ranked 14th in the nation, having an outstanding career himself. It's awesome to see these guys coming back to the Lehigh Valley and seeing, getting an opportunity to see them compete live. And again, now fourth or fifth, I underestimated it, but uh, another guy who lost in the round of 12, the blood round last year to miss out on All-American status was Brett Unger. Unger uh, 
round of 12 loss last year to just miss that podium. So many talented wrestlers here with motivation to come into this season after last year falling just short. And this is a very good, like, Brett Unger is really good. This is going to be a great matchup. Stanich has some big wins on the season already this year as a first year wrestler. I mean, Stanich is a great prep career, state champion, junior national finals. I think he flew under the radar with a lot of head coaches for a while until later in his senior year. And uh, at a rock I mean, how can you not be, how is this not the best spot for him when you got the number one ranked guy, you got Darian Cruz to train with, right? You got Sheldon Seymour, who's very good, Connor McGonigal at a weight class. It's a perfect training situation. His only loss, a 4-2 loss to Troy Spratley out of Oklahoma State. So far, this match really, to me, playing into Brett Unger. And there's that attack I was looking for out of Stanish because Unger is tough on top. No points awarded. Well, no it almost goal. looked like, and I could be wrong, did he uh, look to adjust his headgear for a second and Stanish hit him with a quick double? But give Unger credit, boy. I thought he was giving up that takedown, and he responded well to that. Yes, he did. And as I was saying, Unger is tough on top. This match really playing into uh, what, how Unger would want this to unfold, being a 0-0 match heading into the second period. We got 15 seconds left to go. And speaking of Sheldon Seymour, I saw him earlier today and I told him my apologies. I kept calling him McGonagall yesterday at 125. And he's like, hey, that's no problem. So uh, take a look here. Did, it looked like, he, yes, he adjusted his headgear, and I think he goes to do it again now. Nope. But wrestlers sense that, you know, you keep those hands. If you get out of position for a second, give Unger, he's got to be motivated to wrestle here in Bethlehem, you know? Absolutely. Back Two-time state champion for Notre Dame. Does it get better than this? 16-14 Cornell. Lehigh Cornell, no points scored in the first period. Two periods left. Two top ranked wrestlers in the country going at it here. It doesn't get better than this to answer your question, Scott. Do not take your eyes off the screen. Put a lot of pressure on that arm is Stanich. Unger didn't appreciate that, but now Stanich has a, an arm bar in. And he's got to ride him, because if he decides to go bottom in the third period, we know Unger is very good on top. Yes, we do. He recorded a ball in the state finals with a tilt himself on one of the best wrestlers uh, in the country at the time. You know, if Stanitz can score somewhere here, even if it's, it gives up an escape and a takedown, that gives him the luxury to not have to go bottom in the third period. But what do you do? If it's one nothing. Do you, I think you got to go bottom there, uh, unless as coaches you say, "Hey, like we got two good attacks off in that first period, we got to finish one of these." Oh. For a first-year wrestler, Stanage looks so calm and collected. Unger doing everything he can, but Stanage. Riding tough, 49 seconds of riding time here for Stanich. Looking mature beyond his years in this moment inside Grace Hall for the match over the number nine ranked Cornell Big Red. And there he is working that head lever again. He's gonna pick up that riding time point. He's trying to get that arm bar back in. Is Stanich. And the crowd getting into it here back in their guy. And they're only going to get louder here if Stanich continues to put pressure. And the fans are yelling, stalling. You could probably hear that at home on your TV. We got an arm bar and a one on one here. Stalling on bottom and picking up a point is Stanich. 
And that I'm is huge. Have to agree with you now. I You're think we neutral. go neutral. As you got the riding time, you'll have the riding time locked up. So it is 2-0. But now that three-point takedown will come into play. Would have been a different story last year. I don't know. I think I take bottom because of that three-point. Because of that three-point takedown change this year, I think I take bottom. Up 2-0 with the riding time. And he does. Stevie Round calls it. That three-point takedown comes into play. If it was only two points, I do agree with you. We're going neutral. Well, that's a heck of a lot of confidence to have in yourself. And I give him credit for that. So he gets up to his seat. Feet. And a good call. Now, a takedown only ties it unless it's an early takedown and a ride out. The only thing that surprised me, Steve, is that he didn't try maybe for 30, 40 seconds on top to see if he can work something. I think he knows his opponent very well and knows what he's what he's got to do. And well, Stanich has to be very smart here because riding time is still in reach if we get a quick takedown here by Unger. It'll be interesting to see that he has one more competition after this to use. You get five now if he comes out a red shirt this year. But after this dual meet, I would think he's going to be ranked probably somewhere between five, six, seven in the country. And heck, when Spencer Lee was a senior, he didn't wrestle till January and they had him number one all year without even wrestling about, although he deserved that. This guy's already competed at Midlands. He's competed here for Lehigh. Rank him. Yeah. Riding time will not be a factor, so locked in 3-0 right now for Stanich. Unger has to get to work. Not only a big win for Stanich, but also for the Lehigh Mountain Hawks. 40 seconds left. Look at the anticipation and uh, excitement you can hear it start in the Lehigh in crowd. Still a lot of time left. Yes, there is. 30 seconds. Stanish still the guy on the attack, though, which you love to see as coaches. The Lehigh bench all on their feet. 15 seconds to go. Get ready to hear it, because this place is going to erupt in 10 seconds. And Scott, I think you did call this 17 to 16 victory. And they are all on their feet here. The Lehigh fans. 17-16, Lehigh Mountain Hawks. Lehigh did it. They knocked off the big red. They said, bring them. What a dual meet. So many good bouts. 17-16. Listen to that crowd. And the first-year wrestler, Luke Stanich, puts an exclamation point on it. We'll be back to wrap this one up for you.